In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good and welcome morning. to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. So we prepare ourselves for the celebration that's called to mind all our sins and all our failures and ask God for forgiveness and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of art. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son. Grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah describes the vocation, mission, and suffering of God's servant who will come to save his people. By his baptism at the Jordan, Jesus begins to fulfill this prophecy of Isaiah. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations. He cry out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give to the Lord your sons of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty. The Lord, the voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord will bless his the God of glory thunders, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. Explained to the pagan Cornelius and his household 
that God has brought salvation to, Je to Jews and pagans alike through the mission of Jesus. The baptism of Jesus marks the beginning of his mission. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites, as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace then. The heavens were opened, and the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me. Jesus said to him in reply, Allow it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po ulit sa inyong lahat and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Tulad ng sinabi ko kanina sa umpisa, we are celebrating the feast of the Lord's Baptism. Well, sa, pag, sa pag-celebrate ng feast of the Lord's Baptism, opportunity na siguro ito, pagkakataon na ito, para pag-isipan din yung ating sariling baptism. Kasi kung siguro kung tatanungin ko kayong lahat, gaano nakarami sa inyo ang napag-isipan, ang kanilang binyag recently, baka walang magtatas ng kamay, baka konting-konti lang sa atin kung meron man, ang talagang consciously nag-isip, ano ba talaga yung binyag na yan? Ano ba ginagawa? Ano bang epekto? Alam natin, very common knowledge, pag bibinyag, binubusan ang tubig sa noo, pag bata pa. Pero ano ibig sabihin? Ano ginagawa sa atin? So siguro, tamang-tama, opportunity na ito sa atin para pag-isipan. Dahil lahat naman tayo siguro, malamang, nabinyagan na. Kaya, kaya nga tayo nagsisimba sa Catholic Church. So lahat tayo mga Katoliko, lahat tayo nabinyagan na. So ano yung mga ginagawa ba ng binyag? Ano ba epekto? Merong apat. Una, yung binyag nagpo-fork, nagpapatawad ng lahat, lahat ng kasalanan. Mula doon sa original sin, including personal sins. Kaya nga noong panahon, ang binyag ginagawa as adults. May edad na yung mga tao kapag binibinyagan para mas sigurado sila na ano man yung nagawa nilang kasalanan ay mapapatawad. 
pagpapatawa. So it forgives all of our sins. Pinatawad yung mga kasalanan natin, original sin, personal sins, actual sins, pinatawad lahat yan. Pati ang punishment na kung ano man ang katumbas ng kasalanan natin, kung ano man parusang naka, nakadikit sa ating kasalanan. Pero, hindi porke pinatawad tayo sa, <coughs> sa ating kasalanan, at hindi porke pinatawad yung parusa para sa ating kasalanan, hindi na natin mararamdaman o ma-experience yung effects ng sin. Yung effect ng kasalanan. Halimbawa, di ba? Halimbawa, ikaw ay naglasing, um, pag-uwi mo sa bahay, natabik mo yung kandila or something, nagluto ka, nasunog, lasing ka, hindi mo wala ka sa tamang pag-iisip, nasunog ang bahay mo. Yung mga anak mo, maghihirap din dahil nasunog yung bahay mo na experience nila yung effect ng iyong pagkakamali kahit hindi naman sila may kasalanan. In the same, in a similar manner, tayo rin, dahil nagkasala tayo, tayo pa nga nagkasala, hindi, hindi natin maiwasan na may, uh, ma-experience, madaanan pa rin natin ang effects ng sin. Pinatawad tayo sa kasalanan, pero maaari pa rin natin ma-experience o madanasan ang mga effect ng sin. Pero napakaganda nun ay pinatawad tayo sa kasalanan. Pero ngayon, sabi ko nga nung una ay adult baptism, ngayon ang, pinap- ang mas ginagawa na natin ay infant baptism. Baby pa lang, binibinyagan na. Kasi gusto natin masiguro na kung may mangyari sa bata, ay binyagan na. So, pag nabinyagan na, pwede pa rin magkasala in- afterwards, di ba? Kaya ngayon, pinap- kaya ngayon meron din tayo in- another sacrament Confession, reconciliation, pangsalo dun sa mga kasalanan pwede nating magawa after ng binyag. So napakaganda, di ba? Napaka naisip lahat ng, lahat ng angles. Hmm? Tayo ay binibinyagan sa pangalan ni Kristo para nang sa ganun ay uh, mag-rise ulit sa kamatayan kasama ni Kristo. So pwede nating siguro tanugin dahil kung yung, yung binyag ay ay may kadikit no? sa reconciliation, pinapatawad ng kasalanan, pwede natin sigurong isipin din, pag-isipan, mayroon pa bang ibang mga tao na hindi pa rin natin napapatawad? Kasi parang ironic, no? Parang salungat, pinatawad tayo sa ating binyag, pero tayo ay natin magpatawad sa iba. So pwede natin pag-isipan, sino pa ba yung mga taong hindi ko pa napapatawad sa buhay ko? Baka pwede nating umpisahan ang pagpapatawad. Pangalawa, ang baptism nagbibigay ng sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace, yung big word. Sanctifying grace. Ano ibig sabihin? Grace, ibig sabihin niyan ay tulong, grasya, tulong. Sanctifying, nagpapabanal, nagpapabuti. So sabihin niya, binibigyan tayo ng tulong para maging mas banal. Sa bawat buhay natin, bawat, bawat araw ng buhay natin, binibigyan tayo ng grasya, ng tulong ng Diyos para maging mas banal. At yung sanctifying grace na rin yun ay pwede nating masabing breath of God. Sabihin, yung, di ba nung, yung creation, pagkatapos gawin ni, ng Diyos si Adan at si Eva na galing sa lupa, hiningihan niya at nabuhay. The breath of God, the breath of life, the breath of God. Yun din yung sanctifying grace. Binigay, uh, binahagi sa atin, we participate in the life of God, in the divine life of God, in the eternal life of God. Kaya nga, kahit mamatay yung ating katawan, pwede pa rin, nabubuhay pa rin tayo dahil meron tayong spiritual soul, the participation in the life of God, which makes us like God, which also enables us, binibigyan tayo ng kapangyarihan, kakayanan, para gumawa ng makadiyos na bagay. Magmahal, magpatawad, maging mabuti, tumulong, maki, magkaroon ng malasakit, makadiyos na gawain. Because we have the breath of God and because of that, we also have been called the adopted sons and daughters of God. Inampun tayo 
bilang maanak ng Diyos. Yan po tayo, maging anak ng Diyos katulad ng pagiging anak sa anak ng Diyos na naging si Jesus. So it makes sanctifying grace, it makes us holy. Tulong para tayo maging holy, maging banal. So ang tanong natin sa ating sarili, consciously, sinasadya ba natin, gumagawa ba tayo ng mga bagay, mga paraan, mga uh, measures para maging mas banal? para maging mas maging mas katulad ng Diyos. Consciously ba naggumagawa tayo ng inyo nag talagang sinasadya ba natin na gumawa ng mga bagay-bagay para maging tayo para mamuhay tayo na maging ka, mas katulad ng Diyos. Do we consciously try to become more holy? Pangatlo, we become members of the body of Christ. Maging miyembro ng body of Christ, which is the church. Kaya yeah, nga, linggo-linggo, nagagata tayo para sumamba, para magsimba, dahil we are the body of Christ. During the week, nagkakanya-kanya tayo sa kanya-kanyang mga pamamahay. Pero once a week at least, no, we come together and worship together because we are the body of Christ. Kasama tayo sa isang community, sa isang kapatiran kay Kristo. We gather together on, uh, on Sundays. We live and pray as a community. Kaya nga, di ba, kapag may mga nangyayari, kapag yun, dumating yung ODEP, di ba, nagkaroon ng COVID, ano ginagawa natin? As a community, we pray not only for ourselves, but we also pray for others because we are together in this. No? Magkakasama tayo sa biyahe na ito. Mamaya, pagkatapos ng creed, Magkakaroon na yung prayers of the faithful. Sasabihin natin, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ano bang ginagawa natin dun? Pinagdadasal natin yung iba-ibang mga tao at mga kasamahan natin na nangangailangan ng tulong. We pray for others. We nagigis nilang kasama sa ating concerns. We are concerned for them. Because we are together. Magkakasama tayo. We are all members of the same body of Christ. We are all members of the same, one and the same Catholic Church here and everywhere in the world. Hindi lang dito sa Manawag. Magkakasama tayo isang Catholic Church sa buong mundo. So we are no longer strangers to one another. Kahit di tayo magkakilala, pwede tayo mag- pinagdadasa natin. Di ba yung mga tao sa ibang bayan, kapag meron ding nangyari sa ibang bansa, no? pinagdarasal din natin because we are all together in one church, one body. And as such, because we belong to this church, we should know and we should obey what this church teaches us. Di ba? Miyembro ka ng Catholic Church. Eh, baka mami, hindi natin alam kung anong tinuturo ng Catholic Church. Miyembro tayo ng Catholic Church, hindi natin, hindi tayo nag-agree, hindi tayo sumusunod sa mga sinasabi sa atin ng Catholic, instructions sa atin ng Catholic Church. Paano natin masusunod kung hindi natin alam? So, ang tanong sa atin sarili, do we know? Do we try to get to know the teachings? Ano bang sinasabi ng Catholic Church tungkol dito, tungkol sa ganitong subject, sa ganitong concern, sa ganitong issue? Ano bang sinasabi ng Catholic Church? Sinusunod ba natin If we are members of the Catholic Church, dapat lang malaman natin at sundin natin. Pangapat, yung baptism is a doorway. Parang pintuan, papunta sa, para ma-experience natin yung iba pang mga sakramento, iba pang tulong ng Diyos na nagpapabanal. Sa doorway, is a way, para siya ng ticket, lisensya, para matanggap din natin yung iba pang mga sakramento tulad ng First, ng Eucharist o Communion, tulad ng Reconciliation o Confession, tulad ng Kasal o Matrimony, tulad ng um, Anointing of the Sick or yung, pag may sakit, pagbabasbas sa may sakit, tulad ng Ordination kapag magpapare. Kung wala tayong baptism, kung hindi tayong nabinigyan, hindi natin ma-avail yung ibang pang mga sakamit sa iyo. It's a doorway to the other sa Kaya, yung mga magulang, ano, tip lang, 
tago nyo yung mga baptismal certificate sa mga anak ninyo. Dahil pag lumaki na yan at magpa-first communion na, magpa-confession na, hahanapin yan. Hahanapin yan. Kung hindi nyo man matago, al- huwag nyo kalimutan kung saan bininyagan. At kung kailan, at least kung saan bininyagan. Para pwede humingi ng panibagong copy, no? But we did that. It's a doorway to other sacraments. So, tanong, we are all baptized. We have access to all the other sacraments. Ina-access nga ba natin? Tinatanggap ba nga natin yung tulong na nandiyan, hinahain na sa atin ng Diyos, ng simbahan? Kinukuha ba natin? Nagpapartake ba tayo? Nagkukumpisal ba tayo taon-taon? At least once a year, yun ang turo ng simbahan. Nagkukumpisal ba tayo at least once a year? Kapag nagkukuminyon pa tayo, sineseryoso ba natin yan? No? Para lang tayong pumipila sa rasyon ng bigas. Naisip ba natin kung ano talaga nangyayari kapag tayo nagkukuminyon? Kapag nasa edad ka na, nakasal ka na ba? Kung ikaw ay nakikisama sa, sa isang sa iyong asawa, nakasal ka na ba sa simbahan? Ka nag-aantay po ng makaipon ng malaki para, para magkaroon ng malaking handa. Hindi naman yun na importante. Ang importante, nabasbasan tayo ng simbahan. Nakasal ka na ba sa simbahan? We avail. Nandiyan yung mga sacraments na yan para matulungan tayo maging badal. Hindi lang siya, you know, practice na ginagawa. They are there to help us become more holy, to become more like God. To allow that sanctifying grace to bear fruit. To allow that sanctifying grace to grow and be, and be nurtured by it. Nandiyan yan para sa ating kabutihan. At kung matutupad natin lahat ng yan, magpatawad, napatawad tayo at continuously tayo napapatawad sa kasalanan, dumalakas tayo spiritually because of sanctifying grace, we continue to be good and, and obedient members of the Catholic Church and we avail of the sacraments and we try to do our best in being a good Christian Catholic. Sana. At the end of our lives, when we come, when we come face to face with God, sana maririnig din natin yung sinabi ng Diyos kay Jesus no, sa kanyang baptism. Here is my beloved son. Sa atin naman, pwedeng sabihin, you are my beloved son or daughter with whom I am well pleased. Sana marinig din natin yun. Katulad ng sinabi niya kay Jesus, na siyang atin namang sinusundan. Sana marinig natin. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter with whom I am well pleased. Let us all stand down. And together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus came to be baptized in the Jordan so that through the cleansing waters of baptism, He may heal our sinful nature. Let us now pray to the Father that we may live up to our dignity as his children. After each petition, we say, Lord, listen to your people.
Lord, listen to your people. For Pope Francis, bishops. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and all who exercise authority in the church, may they serve as the Lord's light so that their flock, whom they are bound to serve, may follow the path that leads to peace, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. For all public servants, may they become responsible leaders who foster love and concern so that they may build their communities in harmony and peace, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. For the end of the pandemic, may we show our compassion and empathy to those who are greatly affected by the pandemic, especially those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. For all of us gathered today, may we be reminded of our own baptism, to live as pure as Christ, to follow Christ's light, and to become worthy sons and daughters of the Father, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. For all the faithful departed, may they recline with the saints and angels at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. Jesus, O Heavenly Father, grant that we may be faithful to Jesus to whom we belong in body, mind, and spirit by our baptism in water and the spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Bless thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this holy water, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable. To God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of Him who willed in His compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, 
we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray now to our Father in heaven in the words that our Lord himself has taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please kneel. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please kneel for the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us. I call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pakikisa sa Santa Misa. Maram, pagdasal po natin ang bayan o ang bumbong mundo para makaraos na tayo matapos ng ating problema sa COVID at ang pandemya. Pagdasal din natin ang bayan natin para sa darating na elections, sana maging peaceful, maging uh, smooth at maging honest. Pagdasal natin ang ating sarili para matanggap natin ang inspiration of the Holy Spirit para ma maboto natin, maisip natin mabuti at maiboto natin kung sino yung nararapat para sa posisyon na paghahalalan natin. Hindi yung kung sino yung malamang mananalo, kung sino yung malaking nagbigay, kundi kung sino yung nararapat para sa posisyon na halalin natin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended, go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.